Here we want to look at two interesting alternating sums that involve reciprocals and the floor function. So the first one will be the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over the floor of the square root of n. And then the next one will be essentially the same thing, but now we have the floor of the cube root of n. So generally, the first thing that you want to do whenever you're working with expressions involving the floor function is somehow rewrite it without the floor function. So we're going to do that in the following way. So let's notice that the floor of the square root of n equals m, which is a natural number, if and only if we have the square root of n is bigger than or equal to m, and it's strictly less than m plus 1. Okay, and that just follows from the definition of the floor function. It is the greatest integer that is smaller than the square root of n in this case. But now we'd like to get rid of the square roots and we can do that by squaring all parts of the inequality. So that's gonna give us m squared is less than or equal to n, which is strictly less than m plus one quantity squared. But then just by multiplying out that binomial, that's equal to m squared plus two m plus one. And now notice I have a less than or equal to here, and I have a strictly less than here. And we'd like to replace the strictly less than with a less than or equal to. And let's see how we can do that. So if n is strictly less than m squared plus 2m plus 1, and also m is a natural number, that tells us that n is less than or equal to m squared plus 2m. So that just follows from the discreteness of the natural numbers. Now we're going to use this inequality to rewrite our goal sum in a much more manageable form. So I'll just copy this down first. We have the sum n equals 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n plus 1 is in the numerator, and then we have the floor of the square root of n in the denominator. Now I'm going to rewrite this as a sum over all natural numbers m, so that'll be m equals 1 to infinity, and then a sum inside of that over all values where the floor of the square root of n is equal to m. So I'll write that, the floor of the square root of n equals m. And now we still have minus one to the n plus one in the numerator. And we still have the floor of the square root of n in the denominator, but we're rewriting that as m. So this is over m. Okay, great. And so now notice I can rewrite this a little bit. So I can take a minus sign out of the whole thing. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I can rewrite this as the sum m equals one to infinity of one over m. So this inner sum is indexed by n. So that means I can pull an m out of it because it's like a constant. And now my inner sum is the sum n equals m squared up to m squared plus two m. And now I have minus one to the n. But now let's go ahead and look at that inner sum. So in other words, we want to look at the sum n equals m squared up to m squared plus 2m of minus 1 to the n. And notice that this is just a sum of alternating plus and minus ones. So now I'm going to expand this out a little bit. So this is going to be minus 1 to the m squared plus minus 1 to the m squared plus 1 plus all the way up to minus 1 to the m squared plus 2m minus 1. And then finally, the last one is minus 1 to the m squared plus 2m. Now what we want to do is notice how many terms there are here. So there are exactly m squared plus 2m minus m squared plus 1 terms because this is like the zeroth term. So let's go ahead and write that. So that boils down to 2m plus 1 total terms. And furthermore, they're alternating. And so this one might be a plus one or a minus one, but that would make the next one a minus one or a plus one, and so on and so forth. So like I said, they're alternating. So what I'm going to do is group these last two m terms. And notice if we take an even sum of numbers that are alternating between negative one and positive one, these are always going to cancel each other out. So notice the minus one to the m squared plus one will be canceled out with the minus one to the m squared plus two. And then the minus one to the m squared plus three will be canceled out with the minus one to the m squared plus four, all the way up to the very end where this minus one to the m squared plus two m minus one is canceled out with this minus one to the m squared plus two m. And again, we're ensured that every term gets canceled out by the next term because there are an even number of terms. 
So that tells us that this inner sum really just adds up to this number right here, which is minus one to the m squared. And we know that that is the same thing as minus one to the m. And that's because m squared and m have the same parity. In other words, when m is even, m squared is even. And when m is odd, m squared is odd and vice versa. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take this entire thing here and replace it with minus one to the m. And that's what we'll do as we start the next board. On the last board, we reduced our goal sum, which was the sum n equals one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over the floor of the square root of n down to this alternating harmonic series. So it's minus the sum m equals one to infinity of minus one to the m over m. And now what I wanna do is evaluate this. So some of you guys probably already know what this evaluates to, but just for completeness, let's work it out anyway. So now what we'll do is rewrite this as minus the sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus x to the m over m, where x is being evaluated between zero and one. So notice if we evaluate x at one, we just re-achieve this original a sum, and then if we evaluate it at zero, we just get zero. So this is like taking the zeroth integral of a function or something like that. But now we'll notice that our exponent here is the same thing as our denominator here. So that really points us towards the fact that maybe we're taking an integral of a power series. And we can actually re-index this pretty quickly in order to see that. So let's let k equal m plus one. And so that's gonna change this to negative. And now we're gonna have the sum k equals zero to infinity of minus x to the k plus one over k plus one. Again, evaluating x from zero to x equals one. But now I'll rewrite this as an integral of a different series. So let's write this as the integral from zero to one of the sum k equals zero to infinity of minus x to the k dx. Okay. So let's talk our way through that. So if we take the antiderivative of minus x to the k, we'll get minus x to the k plus one over k plus one, but then we get a minus sign up front because of the chain rule. But now this thing is a geometric series where the common ratio is minus x. So it's well known that that adds up to one over one plus x. So we can rewrite this last step as the integral from zero to one of one over one plus x dx. Okay, and then that has a fairly simple antiderivative, so that's gonna give us the natural log of one plus x, which we need to evaluate at zero and one. So evaluating it at one, we'll get the natural log of one plus one, which is the natural log of two. Evaluating it at zero, we'll get the natural log of one, which is zero. So in the end, we get the natural log of two is our solution. So we could go ahead and add that right here. So our first goal sum is equal to the natural log of two. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at this second one and we'll do that a little bit more quickly. We just got done showing that the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over the floor of the square root of n was equal to the natural log of two. Now we're gonna go ahead and see what this related sum where instead of the square root, we have the cube root of n. And we're gonna do this in the same type of way. So let's go ahead and find m where the cube root of n is equal to m. So what that tells us is that m is less than or equal to the cube root of n, which is strictly less than m plus one. Again, using the same logic we did before. Now we're just gonna cube all sides of this inequality, again, exac exactly like we did before. And then we're gonna get m cubed is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to m plus one quantity cubed. But I'll just go ahead and write that out. So that's m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m plus one. And that should be a strictly less than. But now, just as we did before, we can make that from a strictly less than to a less than or equal to if we subtract this plus one. Again, with the same logic that we had before. And now we can rewrite our starting sum, which was the sum n equals one to infinity minus one to the n plus one over the floor of the cube root of n in the same way with the double sum. So that's gonna be the sum m equals one to infinity over the sum. And then let's just point out that here, I'm looking at the sum over all n values where the cube root of n equals m. 
So that tells me I should be summing from n equals m cubed all the way up to m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m. Good. And then I do the same kind of thing. So I have minus 1 to the n plus 1 all over. Now I have the floor of the cube root of n, but notice the floor of the cube root of n is equal to m in this case. Good. So now I'll kind of do the same thing that I did before. I'll bring this 1 over m out. I'll also bring a minus sign out. So that's going to be equal to minus the sum m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over m. And then the sum n equals m cubed up to m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m of minus 1 to the n. But now let's go ahead and look at this inner sum. So I'll go ahead and bring this inner sum down here. So we have the sum n equals m cubed up to m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m. And then we have minus 1 to the n. OK, great. So now I'm going to write this out a little bit. So that's going to be minus 1 to the m cubed. So notice that's the very, very first term. And then we have plus, and I'm going to group all of the rest of them. So the next one will be minus 1 to the m cubed plus 1, plus all the way up to minus 1 to the m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m. Good. And then the important thing here is we can count up how many terms there are in this sum. And there are exactly 3m squared plus 3m terms. But we can rewrite that as 3 times m times m plus 1 total terms. But now m is either even or odd, which makes m plus 1 either odd or even, which means this product is always even, because one of these is always even. So again, we're adding up a bunch of alternating plus and minus 1s, but we've got exactly an even number of them. So that means all of this cancels out to 0, just like it did before. And we're just left with minus 1 to the m cubed, which is exactly equal to minus 1 to the m. Again, like we said before, because m and m cubed always have exactly the same parity. So that means we can replace this entire inner sum with just minus 1 to the m. And that'll leave us with minus m equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the m over m. In other words, the same sum that we ended with in the first case, which in the first case we showed that this was equal to the natural log of 2 as well. So that means here we have this is equal to the natural log of 2. Okay, and then maybe for some quick follow-up questions, do we expect the same thing to happen for all such sums? In other words, say if we fix sum number r, and we look at the alternating sum, n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1, over the floor of the rth root of n, do we also expect that to be the natural log of 2? So maybe play around with that and post what you find in the comments.